The 2-2. Got him looking. Located pitches here as he winds down his night in the seventh. That one is down. He makes the play. We go into the eighth inning. Hollywood is trying to write a beautiful script here this afternoon. The 3-2 pitch to Chris Bryant in the air to center field. Herrera going back toward the wall. Does he have it? He reaches down. Did he make the catch? He made the catch! The 13th no-hitter in Philadelphia Phillies franchise history has a little bit of drama right at the end. Cole Hamels, he is back, and his teammates are mobbing him right around the pitcher's mound. What's going on, everyone? Hunter Doyle here from Philly Insider Podcast and philliesnation.com. Thank you all for tuning in. First off, make sure to hit the like and subscribe if you are new here. And yeah, today we're going to be talking about Cole Hamels because he's having a workout on Friday, and the Phillies are going to be one of the teams visiting. And obviously, starting pitching is something we are looking at right now as we head into the second half and the trade deadline approaches because, look, I know a lot of fans are you know very negative about the team and don't really think that we should compete this year, and I get that perspective, but at the same time, the front office is still going to look to buy, and I think they're, you know, they went into the All-Star or the All-Star break, yeah, pretty hot right now. They they took a series against the Padres, took a series against the Red Sox, and obviously, you know, they took down the middling Cubs um when we were or actually the very the struggling Cubs while we were in Chicago. So, they got hot before the All-Star break, won some key series, and they're getting healthier, and I want to end the playoff the playoff drought. I mean, I am a fan at the end of the day. I want this playoff drought to be over. So, no matter how bad the team, you know, it might be in certain aspects of, of the, the, you know, the bullpen and the rotation and all that, even some holes in the lineup still, I want to make the playoffs and just end that drought. You can't tell me you wouldn't be excited with a playoff game at Citizens Bank Park in October. There's nothing better than it, nothing better than Red October for the Phillies. So, I, you know, I want to see if they can get it done. And right now... The rotation is definitely something we got to look at because Wheeler, obviously the ace of the rotation, Nola not having a good season, but he's still a guy, he's a competent piece at the top of the rotation. And Eflin has also been, you know, having probably his best year of his career. So we have three guys at the top of the rotation who can get it done on any given day. But then you have the last two guys, which is, let's start with Vince Velasquez, who threw two and a third and gave up eight runs versus the Boston Red Sox the other day. That can happen. I know it's the Red Sox. I understand that, and I understand they can hit one through nine. They have a very good lineup. But at the same time, you've got to be able to weather the storm there and not leave that many pitches in the zone. If you are struggling with command, you got to miss out of the zone. That's my big thing. Matt Moore hasn't done a great job this year, but he has missed out of the zone recently. That's what I think his last two starts, that's what's really helped him is he hasn't been throwing a ton of meatballs out there. Now, he, he hasn't gone past the fifth inning at all, but he has been able to at least keep us in the game while he's been out there, which is all you can ask of a guy who was pitching in Japan a year before and kind of trying to revitalize his career, if we're being honest. So, also, he has pitched at Fenway before. He's a former Tampa Bay Ray. So, you know, that does make sense at the same time, that maybe he was a little more comfortable there than Vinny. At the end of the day, both of those guys are not going to get the job done. Vinny... Since that May 31st start in Cincinnati, it seems like the wheels have come off. And I know, you know, he it's, it's kind of been the story of his whole career, to be honest, in Philly. Um, you know, he has some good starts here and there. People kind of start to believe in him again. And he just kind of starts going downhill once things get bad. So ever since then, I think the, maybe the, the Marlins start it was and the, the Yankees start that he did pretty well in both of them. But other than that, it has been not so good for Vinny. So... You know, he. I, I don't know why they keep keeping him around when he's consistently still hitting his spots and his velocity has gone down over the years. I'm not really sure why he's still here because I think there are definitely better options out there, but he's still on the team right now, and I think you got to look at what your better options are. you got to evaluate. So going off of that, Cole Hamels, a guy who has had, you know, a lot of success in his career. I think he's only had an ERA over four three times in his career, which was his rookie year his 2009 year, and I can't remember which Rangers year it was off top, but it was one of his years with the Rangers. And obviously, American League, you're facing the DH, so there, there's it's a little bit tougher. He had a little bit of a tougher time in the American League. Understandable, right? And, I mean, he's not going to be pitching the American League if he comes here. He'll be pitching in the National League. And I want to say this. I know a lot of Phillies fans will say, 
you know, it's a reclamation project that, you know, we don't need to do this and bring back old players to see if they can revitalize this team in the second half. I totally understand that point of view. I do. But at the same time, like I said, I'm a fan. I think the Phillies team is going to be buyers. And at worst, I think Cole Hamels would be on par with what Vinny and Matt Moore are doing. I think that is fair to say. And, you know, obviously you look at Cole Hamels last year. He had the shoulder injury and only really started one game, I think it was, with the Braves where he threw like three and a third, gave up three runs. That is on par with what Vinny and Matt Moore are doing. Literally, statistically, that has been similar to what they've been putting out on the field. So I think you look at that, you look at his last full season, which was with Chicago, where he pitched, I think it was, he went 7-7, seven 3-8 seven, ERA, around that range. And yeah, I mean, if you if you can get anything left out of him that he's got left in the tank, I think it makes a lot of sense. He's 6'4", left-handed pitcher. You know, maybe his stuff doesn't play the same as it did earlier in his career. But I do think that, again, he's he could be a solid 4-5 or five pitcher if all goes well. And at worst, he's probably going to be um, around where, you know, the other guys are. So it's not going to have too much of an effect anyway. But I think in addition to that, even if he isn't pitching well, he's at least a, a guy who can speak from experience to these young guys that we have in the rotation, in the bullpen. I think that that's a, that's a big plus that you get by signing him, right? So, you know, he is 37. He is definitely, like I said, he's at the back end of his career. But I think it would make a lot of sense. It just depends how does he look in his workout on Friday? Because obviously, if he doesn't look like a major league pitcher, you're not going to bring him back, right? You, you got to make sure he looks good. Then even if he does, you got to see what their asking price is, what the ne negotiations are going to be like. And then on top of that, you got to get him on a schedule because it's been halfway through the season. I remember when Kimbrell came in halfway through the season and signed, he struggled a little bit at first. You know, you have to get some starts in the minor leagues. You have to get on a schedule. So it's going to take a little bit of time. But even with that, I think it's worth a shot because you don't have to give up any prospects from your depleted farm system, go after and get them. And, you know, I think then you can focus on the relievers at the deadline, maybe a Richard Rodriguez. Maybe I'll talk about him in another video. Uh, maybe a Ian Anderson or sorry, not Anderson, Ian Kennedy. And, you know, there's some other guys out there too. So maybe you focus on the trade deadline on that and you bring in Cole Hamels. Either way, you know, I, 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 I could see the concern with it. I don't think it's exactly fixing a ton, but I do think that it could definitely um, end up panning out somewhat, especially he's got his playoff experience if we did make the playoffs. So we'll see. I mean, I know it's not exactly the flashiest pickup, and it might not play too, too well, um, but, you know, I, I think it is definitely worth a shot considering what we have. So, you know, I kind of got repetitive there at the end, but I really just wanted to hammer down that point of, you know, it really could be better than what we have. But there are better options. Maybe we get someone on the trade market as a starter. But either way, I'm excited to see what we do going forward. It's cool to see the All-Star game tonight. And, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Appreciate it. Check out my work below. And ring the bell. Run, baby, run. Fly goes fly for the Eagles. And thank you guys again. God bless.